I equate it to feeling like you're in Jurassic Park or something. You know, you're only 30 minutes away, but it feels like you're in a completely different universe. And this is their, this is their world. And you just get to be sort of like a fly on the wall. My name is Carolyn Casey, and I'm a graduate student researcher in the Ecology and Evolutionary Biology Department at UC Santa Cruz. Each year, um, male elephant seals arrive at Ana Nuevo, which is a breeding colony located just 30 miles north of UC Santa Cruz. And they sort of fight to establish um, access to breeding females. And then once those um, hierarchies have been established, um, they will often emit sort of ritualized displays that um, also include um, vocalizations. And so what we were interested in is what type of information is actually contained within the vocalizations produced by males and how this information is used during the breeding season to cut down on the cost of fighting while still maintaining the social relationship between male elephant seals. We spent an entire breeding season collecting acoustic recordings from adult males and then we did an in-depth analysis of a subset of those individuals to see which, individ which components of the calls might be most reliable within an individual. Finally, we did playback experiments to test the functional relevance of these calls to listeners to see whether or not an individual had to have experience with the caller in order to know how to respond to that individual or if there's something potentially within the construct of the call that encoded either size or dominance. Um, and we found that when we played back the call of an animal's most familiar dominant rival, he actually moved away from the speaker. And then um, kind of reversely, if we play back the call of his most subordinate rival, he moved or attacked or called at the speaker. And this was, um, so basically they moved in the predicted direction. However, when we moved to a breeding colony that was located just 300 miles south, found a similar set of 10 kind of mid-ranking males and played them back those same calls, they had no differential response. And in fact, only three out of the 20 males that we did playbacks to moved at all. So an individual really had to have previous um, experience with the caller in order to know how to assess and respond to that, that vocalization. And so the purpose of these calls is to be able to emit them during some sort of social interaction and then one male might hear the call of another male and say, oh, I don't, I don't want to interact with that male. That male beat me in a past interaction. I remember his call and then respond accordingly. But they only really know how to assess these calls if they have previous interactions with their contestants. And so um, they have to be really familiar with individuals in order to know how to respond to the calls of their rivals.